Color series of ABM. Here we are covering important theory, numericals, and objective questions. So follow the series from the start. Let's start. So today we'll be studying some part of this. We'll be studying some theory and some part of the numerical version. Okay. So there are two main areas of inferential statistics. Now this is an important topic in your this uh, ABM. Okay, means uh, this. Uh, estimation okay inferential inferential means from which you can draw the inferences one is estimation and second is testing of hypothesis estimation means what i am doing sitting on the bench work means sitting over here okay so uh, estimating doing specifically on the calculations and testing of hypothesis means what i assume something and go on the field and then find out the real answer Estimation means doing the calculations more. This is going on the field more. So estimating parameter. This means taking a statistic from your sample data and using it to say something about the population parameter. Now look at this. Taking the statistic from your sample data means something which I have collected already. I'll be using that and estimating something about the population. Now what do you mean by this, uh, this concept? Okay, let me explain you. Say this. Suppose if this, this is let's say my state, okay, let's say Delhi, okay, this is my Delhi. So let's say I have to do a survey of, uh, let's say 1 lakh people in Delhi, 1 lakh, okay, people in Delhi. So will I be able to do 1 lakh people survey over here? Means uh, any, not possible. So what will I do? I'll do, take samples over here from four corners of Delhi, okay. And find out whatever I require. Suppose if I require the salaries of these 1 lakh people or the persons of Delhi. Okay, I require the average salary of Delhi. Okay. So in that case, will it, is it possible for me to take it from, from the entire population? Go to every house and check oh, what is the salary? Not possible. So what will I do? I'll take samples from, let's say, four corners. Here, there can be more corners also. Find out the salaries and then apply that. Uh, using it to say something about the population so apply it to the entire Delhi okay that's what is estimation now what are mutually exclusive events mutually exclusive means what the things are mutually exclusive and that are mutually exclusive are not able to occur simultaneously so simultaneously they won't occur at all okay means what can it occur uh, simultaneously that you pass also and you fail also in any exam no these are exclusive events. Either you pass or you fail. Okay. In business, this is typically concerning the undertaking of projects or allocating the budget. Now, what do you mean by this? Suppose, let's say I'll ask you one question. If you are having 1 lakh rupees. Okay, 1 lakh. And these 1 lakh rupees, you can give it for either two, two of the projects. One is holiday. You want to go on a holiday. Okay. Or second is your studies. Let's say your studies, okay. So you want to give it for your studies. Some somewhere you might have to go for studies, and you require that one lakh rupees fees or anything. So where will you go? Both the things can happen. Can't happen, right? Either you can have the cake in your hand or you can eat. Both the things can't happen. Can't happen. So this is known as exclusive. So you'll have to select one of these. So definitely you'll select the studies. Of course, there might be someone who says holidays, 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 isn't it? jokes apart but studies is the main part right so in business it typically uh, typically it is this is typically concerning the undertaking of projects and allocating the budget similarly in companies also we face the same problem budget is limited and projects are main if two things are not mutually exclusive not means what they can occur simultaneously it means the existence and occurrence of one does not necessarily mean the other cannot exist okay what do you mean by this? See here, whenever I say anything is exclusive, mutually exclusive, okay, then what does it mean? Both the things can't occur at the same time. But if they are not mutually exclusive, it means what? Both the things can coexist at the same time. Means what? I can have, see here, a scoring a first class and passing. Scoring a first class and passing. Both are not mutually exclusive. Why? Because I can pass as well as score in the first class. But passing and failing is are mutually exclusive. Simple. Got it? Type yes in the comment section if you have understood this concept. 
टाइप यस राइट नाउ ओके सो हैव यू अंडरस्टूड म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव नंबर वन नंबर टू हैव यू अंडरस्टूड एस्टिमेशन देन टेस्टिंग एंड हाइपोथेसिस दिस इज नॉट कवर्ड बिकॉज दिस इज नॉट अ पार्ट ऑफ योर स्टडीज ओके आई जस्ट गिविन यू इन ब्रीफ वॉट यू मीन बाई दिस ओके बट टेस्टिंग ऑफ हाइपोथेसिस इज नॉट अ पार्ट ऑफ योर स्टडीज योर पार्ट ऑफ स्टडीज इज एस्टिमेशन ओके फोकस ऑन वॉट एवर इज देयर इन द एग्जाम डोंट फोकस ऑन टू मच नॉलेज ओके बिकॉज अदरवाइज वॉट एवन स्टैटिस्टिक्स इज अज टॉपिक everyone subscribe to officers at that 247 youtube channel in this channel remember you get number 1 free youtube series on all the subjects of jib and cib all all specifically all okay secondly you get uh, the latest updates from iibf now see here it's a exam time iibf will start the notifications now what this exam postponed that exam postponed this timing change that timing change something like that this is the new type of questions we will be adding something so all these notifications which you have uh, received are explained over here on officers at the 247 youtube channel so subscribe to it click on the bell icon click on the like button share it with your friends okay random experiment or trial so what is this this is the last definition for today then we will be solving the numericals random experiment or trial so an operation or experiment conducted under the identical conditions and which has number of possible outcomes is called as random experiment so conducted under under identical conditions identical means what which are similar what do you mean by this when when we designed a covid vaccine during the covid time india was the first country to design such a huge mass scale of covid vaccine how did we do it identical conditions whatever are the symptoms of covid whatever are the qualities of that covid that uh, micro whatever was that similar conditions were created in the lab and then the uh, this vaccine was tested so that is known as identical chandrayaan how was it succeeded identical conditions were first created in the lab okay which has a number of possible outcomes right possible outcomes can be anything chandrayaan can, could have crashed like two but it succeeded why because the identical conditions were so matching they were created in with so much of the in details that the crashing was 0% and possible outcomes so number of possible outcomes is called as a random experiment okay tossing a coin throwing a die selecting a card of packs so these are all bookish examples the latest examples are this covid vaccine designing a covid vaccine designing a chandrayaan these are all the latest examples okay now let's solve the numericals okay let's check this numericals okay simple ones but uh, in exam this comes for, come to you for one mark okay many a times one mark but we get confused over here these one marks are in your pocket actually see this what is the question the percentage of marks obtained by a student in a monthly test are given below so these are the five tests given 1 2 3 4 5 okay and these are the percentages 69 71 73 68 74 right five tests five marks based on the above table find the probability of a student getting more than 70 uh, of the student getting more than 75 70% marks in a test so suppose if i take the test number 6 what is the question actually suppose if i take this test number 6 now 6 what is the chance that the student will get more than 70% that is the question how will you understand it see our question is very simple forget the 6 now okay we will focus on only 5 so out of 5 total test is 5 out of 5 how many are above 70 above 70 so above 70 is what 3 right so above 70 greater than 70 it's 3 right total number of test is what total what is the total number of test 5 So how to find the probability? Probability is always success. See here, probability equals to. You'll say, sir, this question is from probability. How come? How come in this uh, estimation chapter? Remember, all these questions are interlinked. They can be asked anywhere. Okay. So probability equals to what is success? Success upon sample space, right? Sample, sample. S S L right? Sample space. Okay. So success is what? Three sample space is five, so three by five. So my answer will be three by five or point six, sixty percent, zero point six, or somebody can write sixty percent. Okay, so there is a sixty percent probability that the student will get 
in the test number six more than seventy. That is the answer, isn't it? In how many ways one king can be selected from fifty two cards? Again, see here I have taken probability questions over here because they are mixed with these estimation chapters and estimation questions are very simple. I have taken it separately. So how in how many ways can you select one king from fifty two cards? So again, see the same question. Okay. I'll write it simple now. Probability equals to. I'll write it simple. Required, not even the success. What is required? Upon what is total? Okay. Keep it very simple formula. In books they have given this uh, success upon sample space and all this. Uh, keep it simple. What is required? One king. Okay. One king is required. So one king. In how many kings are there in a pack of fifty-two cards? So four. So out of the those four, any king can king can come, isn't it? So the answer which I am getting over here required. What is required for me? Means how, what are the chances of getting something? What is required? So there are four chances, four kings. What is the total? Total is fifty two cards, fifty two, right? So what is my answer then? Four upon fifty two. So one upon thirteen. Whatever that answer will be, one upon thirteen. That probability is right. So you can find it in points or keep it uh, this much also. In exam, you divide it one by thirteen and you will get the answer. Okay. So that is basically if you want, uh, we can divide it also here. Yeah. Zero point. What is that? Zero and then hundred. Thirteen sevens are right. Sevens are ninety one. Again ninety remains. Right. So thirteen six is seventy eight. Yeah. Six is zero point zero seven six. Okay. Or you can keep it one by thirteen also, depending on what is given in the exam. If in the exam they give you one by thirteen, mark it one by thirteen. If they give you this much, mark this point zero. If they give you in percentages, then it will be seven point six percent. Okay. Am I right over here? Yeah, zero point zero. Yeah, correct. Yeah. In how many ways one ace king can be selected? From fifty two cards. Now the probability is changing. See this probability equals to what is required now? Required is one ace king. Ace. How many see here? Ace king. How many ace kings are there in the pack? Ace means there are four types of cards, right? Ace, heart, and what was what is the next one? Type in the comment section, everyone. Ace, heart, diamond, right? Diamond is the third one. And the last one is what? We call it silver in our Hindi language, right? So here we call it what? Ace. This four cards, whatever. Okay, those four cards. So how many ace kings are there? There's only one ace king. Kings are four, but ace king is only one. And what are the total number of cards? Total fifty two. So one by fifty two. That is your answer. Simple, isn't it? See, our required over here. Always remember, formula is simple. Required upon total. Right. Total is always the same in the cards. A required is what it depends on what is asked. If they ask you one king, so four kings are available. One is king. There is only one king available. If they ask you one diamond king, so again uh, only one king, right? So got it simple. In how many ways one joker can be selected from a pack of fifty two cards? One joker. How can you select one joker from a pack of fifty two cards? Again, probability equals to. Required upon total, right? What is required? One joker. How many jokers are there in the pack of fifty-two cards? How many jokers? Tell me. Type in the comment section. How many jokers are there in the pack of fifty-two cards? There are zero, zero jokers. Okay, because the two jokers which we have in the pack of cards are separate than these fifty-two cards. Again, okay, that's why the answer will be zero upon fifty-two. Zero. That is the probability, isn't it? The largest and the smallest value of a data are sixty and forty respectively. If the desired number of class intervals is five, find a class with. This is a separate question from this is from chapter number three. Okay, chapter number three, module A. Okay, so uh, class width is required. How to find out the class width? Class width equals to look at this. Width equals to I'll give you a simple formula. Width equals to range. Range upon number of classes. Number. 
number. What is number of classes? This is simple five. Okay. But what is the range? Range means what? Always remember. Range means always the highest minus lowest. What is the highest number? Sixty. See here, largest and the smallest value. So sixty minus lowest forty. So sixty minus forty. That is twenty. So what is my width now? Width equals to twenty upon five. So that is equal to four. Okay. So this is my answer. What do you mean by width? What is what do you actually mean by this word width? What has happened in this? Suppose if you get the answer four, what do you mean by this? It means your classes are sixty to sixty four. Okay, then sixty five to uh, what will what will what will you say sixty five sixty six sixty seven sixty eight sixty eight. Okay, even this you can make it at sixty one. This is inclusive group sixty one to sixty four sixty five to sixty eight and so on. You can mark it up to what is the last one? No, not forty. It is starting from forty. Okay, I started from sixty. Forty one to forty four, right? Because its lowest is forty one, right? Forty. So forty one to forty four, or you can start it from forty also. Forty to forty four, then forty four to forty eight. This is known as exclusive group. When the ends are ma matching, this is called as exclusive. This above one was inclusive. Ends were not matching. Okay. So this is the meaning of this. You can go up to sixty over here. Last one will be what fifty six to sixty. Okay, that is the answer. Okay. So now everyone uh, download Adda twenty four seven app on your mobile. In this app, you will be getting the premium study material plus live classes, ebooks, tests, whatever you require in the for clearing JIB and CIB. But how to join this? See this. Scan the QR code. You can join our Telegram channel using this QR code. You can join our YouTube using this second QR code. You can join our Instagram using this QR code. So join anyone because I'll tell you all the updates, latest updates, latest series of ABM. Here we are covering important theory, numericals, and objective questions. So follow the series from the start. Let's start. When the items included in a sample are based on the judgment of the individual conducting the sample, the sample the sample is said to be non-random. Is it true or false? We are talking of this A one now. A. When the items included in the sample are based on the judgment of the individual conducting the sample, the sample is said to be non-random. What do you say, guys? Type in the comment section. True or false? I want to answer only true or false. Individual conducting the sample, judgment of the individual conducting the sample. So it is. Yes, yes, yes. It is. Correct. The answer is. See here, individual conducting the sample. This is a type of non-probability sampling. So the answer for this is true. Okay. The answer for this is true. Everyone. Okay. One second. So the answer is true over here. Let me mark it over here. True. Okay. Second one. A statistic is a characteristic of a population. Now this is a simple one. You must answer this. A statistic is a characteristic of a population. True or false? What do you say? Statistic is a characteristic of a population. Let me see. Everyone, think over it. What is population? What is sample? Suppose if I find the mean of population, what is it called as? Suppose if I find the mean of a sample, what is it called as? Mean of a sample is called as statistic, and mean of a population is called as parameter. So what does it mean? A statistic is a characteristic of not a population, but it's for the sample. So this answer is false. Okay, false over here. Okay, got it, everyone. Answer is false. Next one. See, such questions are asked to you in the exam, and you need to be very clear in your mind about it. A sampling uh, plan that selects members. A sampling plan that selects members from a population at uniform intervals in time order or space is called a stratified sampling. So, sampling plan that selects members from a population. So, at uniform intervals, this is an important word over here. Uniform intervals. 
so the sampling length which selects the members at uniform interval is called a stratified sampling is it true type fast in the comment section true or false what do you think true or false true or false yes it is called as true or false true or false yes firstly what are the types of samplings probability samplings there are four types of probability sampling what are those one is simple random yes type in the comment section one is simple random second one is yes everyone in the comment section please yes 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 one is simple random second is systematic correct systematic second one right third one stratified correct and fourth one cluster got it so here this stratified is the right answer or no now you might you all of you have to search it you might have the answers also so this is uniform interval means it is not stratified sampling it is called a systematic sampling so the answer over here is false again okay it is false got it everyone yeah. second next one as a general rule it is not necessary to include a finite population multiplier in computation for for a standard error the mean when the sampling size is greater than 50 okay let me change this let me make it when the sampling size is greater than 30 so now give me the answer as a general rule it is not necessary to include a finite population multiplier in computation for a standard error of a mean when the sample size is greater than 30 now tell me the answer yes it should be greater than true or false in the comment section i want the answer from everyone is it true or false yes it is it is true 30 is a true answer okay 30 is a true answer this is true it should be greater than 30 then the finite population multiplier is not required in that case okay so the minimum sample size is 30 for these cases okay so now before going ahead everyone let me tell you see this join our telegram channel and our youtube channel using this okay telegram and youtube channel both the channels you should join scan this qr code right now over here okay scan this qr code over here scan it and you can join our telegram plus youtube now what why should you join our youtube and telegram channel why why see the reason is in these channels you will be getting all the updates number one from uh, this iibf okay so what is the youtube channel officers under 24 7 youtube channel remember there are many fake channels also so that's why this qr code is given by scanning this qr code you can directly join the linkedin and this uh, telegram channel of this officers under 24 7 okay similarly for this youtube channel you can join this youtube channel also using this qr code okay so do it fast okay the probability distribution of the means of all the possible samples is known as sample distribution of the means is this true or false the probability this this question we are dealing with the probability distribution of the means of all the possible samples is known as the sample distribution of the means is it true or false everyone what do you think true or false this see here what are we talking of probability distribution of the means of the samples so we are focusing on the word samples over here so whenever we are doing the probability distribution of any mean or mode or median anything for the samples it is known as sample distribution or it's called a sampling distribution that is the right word actually sampling but in exam they might give you sample also okay so this answer is again true okay this answer is again true got it next one the principles of simple random sampling are theoretical foundation of the statistical in, uh, inference what is this principles of simple random sampling so just now what did i tell you what are the four types of samplings 
one is simple random second is systematic third is uh, this uh, stratified and last one is this cluster right so which one is the best sampling base base you can call base of any sampling techniques or base of statistics among these four which one is considered as a base everyone that will answer this question also the principles of simple random sampling are theoretical foundation of the statistical inference suppose if i have to find any inference of any population so for that i need to do the best method is simple random sampling so that is true again true remember simple random sampling is the best sampling okay is the best sampling all the remaining ones like cluster or this systematic or this uh, what uh, stratified these come later but basic is simple random sampling okay so those who are in the paid class you might have already know i have explained you what is the systematic uh, simple random stratified okay those who are watching on youtube kindly join the paid classes man immediately because there we have lot of time isn't it next one the standard error of the mean is the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample means see this we are dealing in the standard error of the mean is the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample means is this true or false standard error of the mean i am talking of okay so here we are talking of the mean uh, standard error of the mean is the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample means so when you are i am talking of the mean over here standard error means what standard error relates to samples okay remember one simple logic for population we always use the word standard deviation and for this um, what samples we always use the word standard error so standard error of the mean is the standard deviation of distribution of the sample means so standard error will relate to samples this is again true these are all information points for you in exam you might get such questions okay true next one the sampling plan that divides the population into well defined groups from which random samples are drawn is known as cluster sampling so is this known as cluster sampling a sampling plan that divides a population into well defined groups well defined well defined means they can be defined in any terms they can be defined in the in the terms of uh, region they can be defined in the terms of age they can be defined in the terms of marks okay or they can be defined like in systematic sampling they can be defined just by serial order so the sampling plan that divides the population into well defined groups for from which random samples are drawn is known as cluster sampling so is it true or false true or false is it true or false over here everyone it is true see this again true here i'll tell you one point over here even if this answer would have been instead of cluster the answer would have been like this let me i give you three four options over here if the answer would have been instead of cluster it would have been stratified then or uh, systematic then also the answer would have been correct see here well defined groups means what whatever is the is it given specifically that what type of well definition is it related to region see here i'll give you some uh, hints about this cluster will always relate to region always relate to region stratified will always relate to strata means uh, some groups common thing common thing percentages 40 to 60% 60 to 80% systematic will always relate to line all of you stand in one line and every 10th person come here so that is systematic so these are all well defined groups so the answer is true over here 
Okay. The standard error of the mean decreases with an increase in the sample size. So as I go on increasing the sample size, will the standard error decrease or will it increase? As I go on increasing the sample size, see, increase in the sample size. So will this standard error decrease or in increase? What do you say? True or false? Type fast in the comment section, everyone. Yes. The standard error of the mean decreases with an increase in the sample size. True or false? Let me see. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is true. That is the basic rule of sampling. Right? That is the basic rule of sampling. So the standard error will decrease. What is standard error? Standard error is actually the difference between the population mean and the observed mean. Keep it very simple. So standard error is the difference between the population mean and the observed mean. Isn't it? We have that formula z equals to 1 upon psi x bar standard error into x bar minus mu. Right? So that formula is, uh, is known, uh, means that formula gives you x bar and mu. The difference is this known as standard error. Okay? To perform the complete enumeration, what would, one would need to examine every item in the population. Means to perform, do some survey. It's that simple. Suppose if I have to do some survey. So will I have to survey each and every element of, the, um, of that uh, sample size? Means, suppose if I have been told to find out the average salary in any city in Delhi, let's say. I have been told to find out the average salary in Delhi. Will I have to take the sample of each and every person in the Delhi? Will I have to go to each and every house in Delhi and ask them, what is your salary? What is this? What is this? Some 5-6 questions. Is it required to do the survey of each and every element? Not required. Isn't it? What do we do? What do we do in this? We take some sample representative samples. We'll take the samples in the four corners of the city. Isn't it? Four corners, various corners of the city or some 10 samples from various corners of the city. And then we'll find out the average uh, this uh, salary, right? So to perform the complete enumeration, one would need to examine every item in the population. So that is false. Okay, you need not do the enumeration of each and every item of the uh, or do the survey of each and every element of that sample okay in everyday life we see many examples of infinite population of physical objects so do we see them we see many examples of infinite population of physical objects is it true or false infinite population do you do you see them Give me some example. Give me some example of physical objects. Infinite population. Type in the comment section, everyone. Infinite population of physical objects. Okay, I'll give you some example. Let me see how many of you have written. Yeah. Now let me see. So it is, okay. Can you tell me the number of uh, stars in the sky? These are physical objects. Stars are physical objects. Do you know the number of stars in the sky? No, you don't know. Because they are infinite. Suppose if I give you 1 kg of sugar. 1 kg of sugar. And tell you to count each and every grain of that sugar. Each and every grain. Is it possible? Grain, each and every grain. Not possible, isn't it? So these are all physical objects and infinite population we see many examples that is true we see so many examples right so that is true over here next one to obtain a theoretical sampling distribution we consider all the samples of the given size so see this to obtain a theoretical sampling distribution sampling distribution means what is the total number of samples taken 
how the samples are distributed this comes under the normal curve bell curve we call it we consider all the samples of the given cells so do we consider all the samples or no all the samples are given so the answer is true yes we consider all the samples of the uh, given size see here sampling distribution if you have to take you have to consider all the samples whichever sam sampling you have done okay so the answer is true again got it let me see how many of you have answered this yeah next one larger samples are always a good idea because they decrease the standard error so if i have the larger samples will i will it decrease my standard error yes they will decrease just now we saw it in one of the above questions as the sample size increases the standard error will decrease so does it mean i must always go for larger samples is it true what about the cost suppose if i am doing a sample survey of 50 persons versus i am doing the sample survey of 5000 persons what will be the cost of 5000 persons so it's not always a good idea that is a false answer it is not always a good idea because cost considerations are very important in sampling cost is very important part again okay? now before going ahead everyone subscribe to officers at 24 frame youtube channel i gave you the link also uh, scan that uh, qr code okay and subscribe to this channel immediately okay so in this channel you are getting all the latest updates from iibf plus free youtube series right now what are you watching you're watching the free youtube series so you're getting that also so that's why subscribe to it click on the bell icon immediately the mean of certain population was 15 most of the samples we could take from that population would likely have a mean of 15 is it true See here, mean of a certain population was 15 so if the mean of certain population suppose if there is a city and i am having the average salary of that city is 15000 let's say okay so the mean of the samples which i took from all the five corners of the city so will the mean of those samples also be 15 or no that is let me see okay let me see first from your side are you saying true it is false false again okay? the answer is false over here why because it's not compulsory that the mean of the sample should be 15 only i'll give you an example suppose i'm having the samples here i took four surveys let's say four corners of the city and I got the average as means average of one was 10, second one was 20, okay, third one was 15, and fourth one was let's say, mm, let's say 17, okay, okay, and this I'll make it 8, 8. Suppose if I got these four salaries 8,000, 20,000, 15,000, and 17,000. Now you do the addition of all these. 20 plus 8, 28 plus 15, 33, right? 33, then 43, 43, then this 7, uh, 15, then 60, right? So total I'm getting it as 60 over here. Total is 60. Do the average upon 4. What am I getting? I'm getting this as 15. So my population mean is coming out as 15. But was all were all the samples having the mean of 15? No. So it's not compulsory. That is the point I'm stressing. So that is false. The standard error, the standard error of a sample statistic is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So standard error of a sample statistic is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. That is true. What did I say earlier? Sample standard error is same as the standard deviation. So that is true over here. Okay true whatever we this other name for standard deviation is standard error in case of samples for population it is standard deviation judgment sam sampling has the disadvantage that it may lose some representativeness of the sample judgment sampling what is judgment sampling there are two types of sampling one is probability second is judgment 
so judgment sampling has a disadvantage that it may lose some representatives of the sample that is true because judgment is based on the individual judgment suppose if i am the judge i feel something is right but there may be other things which are uh, which are out of my purview or out of my thinking but they may also be right so that is true over here next one the sampling fraction compare the size of the sample to the size of the population now this you must definitely tell me let me see you must definitely tell me this answer it should be yeah sampling fraction compare the size of the sample uh, size of of the sample to the size of the population so that is true. Which you are hiding from the other person, so not known to other. Okay, 
this is the area of not known to other okay and this is the area is which is known to other okay and the number one is your area here is that is known to self okay and the second area is that is not known to self not okay so that is not known to so we have the four quadrant here that is arena blind hidden and dark so that is third area that is hidden area closed area where the information is not known to other right and known to self then the last area is that is the dark area here actually the information which is not known to self right and not known to other that means it is the information which even other don't know about yourself right and even you don't know about yourself so that is a dark area completely unknown area dark area we called it as a even unknown area also okay this is a unknown area so the question here is in the zohari window model the information about yourself that other know in a group but you will unaware about it okay that means other know <coughs> <coughs> other no but you are not okay <coughs> you will be unaware about it so that means that is the area of light okay that means other know about yourself but you yourself don't know about that so that is a blind area now the second question here is red so in the last year in june exam there was a question from the red right that is role analysis tag now what is this analysis technique is all about see <coughs> the role analysis technique right this is actually the intervention normally to design <coughs> to clarify the role expectation and obligation to the team member to improve the team effectiveness right so that is basically the structured exercise to provide an overall picture of what role is supposed to achieve the rationale for its existence in the organization right so normally this technique that is right role analysis technique that is actually the intervention which is designed to clarify role expectation and obligation to the team member to improve the team effectiveness <coughs> so this will be work where actually all the team member they know what is their role is so definitely the role ambiguity the confusion will be ended because of this technique so role analysis is the structured exercise to provide an overall picture of what role is supposed to achieve the rationale for its <coughs> <coughs> so role analysis technique actually give you the idea about the role expectation and role clarification so the answer here is that is role analysis technique now third question is identify the true statement from the following right you have to identify which one is the true statement number one is the child ego state mainly collect information and process okay this is your first goal first option the second is the adult ego stage is mainly responsible for creativity curiosity and reaction to other the third is parent ego stage mainly regulate the behavior and nurture it okay so which one is the correct statement see child 
Vertigo state mainly collecting information processing, which is completely wrong. Okay. Third is the parent ego state mainly regulate behavior and nurturing. <coughs> B is adult ego state mainly responsible for creativity and reaction to others. That is completely wrong. We are talking about child ego state here. Okay. And here we are talking about the adult. But the third one, see in the transactional analysis which is given by the Eric Burn. Okay. We have done in the paid class also. He has given the three state that is child <coughs> adult and parent right so child ego state mainly tells you about your right creativity curiosity and immediate reaction to the other adult ego state is mainly tells you about right to behave reasonable Right, but parent ego state that regulate your behavior and nurture it. So here the right answer is C. That is, <coughs> which one of the following is not a component of EI? See, EI is having the five component. Now, what is that EI is? EI is basically to understand your emotion and to understand other person's emotion as well. Okay, so that is your capability. That is your ability. To understand your emotion and to understand other person emotion as well. So we have the five component here. The number one is self awareness. Number two is self regulation. Number three is empathy. Number four is self motivation. Number five is social skills. Right. So we have total five component here: self awareness, self regulation, empathy, self motivation, and social skills. So basically, when we are talking about these five component, right? That means here actually, which one of the following is not a component of EI? That is, okay. So when we are talking about EI, that is actually to, uh, that is an ability to regulate. Your behavior and to regulate other person's emotion as well. Okay, so we have the five component here. Number one is self awareness. That is to know, uh, uh, to have the awareness about your emotion. Then we have the self motivation. <coughs> that is all about to motivate yourself. Then we have the empathy. Empathy means to have the <coughs> Make up the mood of other, right? You have the capability to change the mood of other. Then we have the self-regulation. That means to regulate your own behavior, right? Then we have the social network. That means you are having the capability to build rapport with others, okay? So here actually technical skills is not the component of EI. So last year in December exam, there was a question of uh, that which one is a component or I think which one is not a component. Like that they have asked. So, these five are the components. Self-awareness, regulation, empathy, motivation and social network. Next question is, what is the head? See, in the personality theory, which is given by the, which is given by the, the motivation, sorry, in the personality theory, that is, three ego state is given, right? That is id, ego, and super ego. Right? Now, what is the meaning of id? See, id is your impulsive behavior. Okay? Freud has suggested that Freud is very famous psychologist. <coughs> right? And he has suggested that in id ego state, right? Sorry, in id state, your impulsive, be impulsive behavior works. Right? That means you are thinking very impulsive, right? Like without even thinking of words. Ego is your reality. It is like your child behavior, basically. Okay? Then ego is your adult-like behavior. That means you are dealing with the reasonability, with the logic, with the according with the situation. Then we have the super ego. Now super ego is all about that is your super ego is moral. Okay? Right and wrong. So what is that it? That is a part of the psyche that control impulse. P is part of the psyche that reduce anxiety. C 
sees a description of the innate institutional right need and G is a part of psyche that control our moods. So what is the meaning of it? That is actually control your uh, sorry that is actually reduce the anxiety description of your innate that part of that is actually the emphasis. <coughs> right. We have the next question that is rebel hypothesis. See, rebel hypothesis is given by the F. W. Taylor. Okay, this is given by F. W. Taylor. Now, what was the opinion of F. W. Taylor? F. W. Taylor has thought that if any employee, right, if any employee who is working in the organization, they are completely working for the money, for the incentive, right? So, rational economic view or rebel hypothesis is given by the F. W. Taylor. Last year in the June exam, this question was asked, right? That what if uh, so? What was the opinion of F. W. Taylor? His opinion was if you are giving the money to the worker, if you are giving them the good salary to the worker, that means they will work for you. Okay, they will work for you. So the option is. <coughs> That is, workers are motivated more by the need for satisfaction. Workers are motivated more by the sense of security. Workers are motivated more by the need for money. Workers are motivated more by the working environment. So, here actually the answer is C. That workers are motivated more by the need for money. Practice. Which one of the following statement is correct about the self-awareness? Again, this question is from the Zwari window. That is arena, blind, closed and dark. Okay. So, we are talking about the self-awareness. Which one is the right? Arena and closed are known to self. Okay. See, this area, this area is what? <coughs> we have already done this. This area is known to other and not known to other. Okay. Uh, that is known to other right and not known to other that is okay this area is <coughs> known to self and not known to self okay so here we are talking about arena and close that are known to self arena and close yes that are known to self Arena and closed that are known to other, which is wrong. Closed and dark are known to other. Closed and dark, known to other. That is also wrong. Arena and dark are known to self, which is also wrong. So, number one is the right. See, if you want to remember this, normally last to last year, in a year of 2022, there was a five marks question from only Zwari. So, it is a very, very important topic. Right. You can see here A, B, C, D. Right. So, this is a very, very important topic. And when we are talking about the Swari window, right, please remember this picture. Upper one is not, uh, that is known to other, not known to other, known to self and not known to self. A, B, C, D. Simple. Okay. So, just, right, remember this picture. If you are remember this picture, then definitely it will be easier for you. Then we have question 9. This is from the reinforcement theory of motivation. Okay. See this concept that is operate conditioning is given by the B.F. Skinner. Now what was the opinion of B.F. Skinner? His opinion was that is, okay, that is actually if you are working something, right? If you are doing a very good work, okay, that means if you are going to reward for that work, then of course you will repeat that way. That is, we called it as a positive reinforcement. But for the behavior, you will be getting the punishment. Then definitely you won't be repeat so that kind of behavior. So, it we called it as a negative behavior. Okay, negative reinforcement. Right? So, here the option is, number one, a reservoir of feeling, thought, urges and memories that are outside of our conscious awareness. B is a behavior training technique. In which reinforcement or punishment are used to influence people. Third is <coughs> the largely unconscious part of the personality. Okay. That mediate the demand of aid ego. 
super ego and reality right so we are actually we are talking about here that is b we are talking about the positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement so that is a bigger training technique in which reinforcement or punishment are used to influence the okay question number 10 is the motivation is determined by the nature of the reward people expect to get as a result of their job performance which of the following theory postulates it okay that that is balance instrumentality and expectancy model instrumentality theory path goal theory or all of them so of course all of them is the right answer all the three names are from the broom theory so when we are talking about the broom theory that means we are talking about if we know what type of reward that person is going to get okay what kind of reward we are going to get that definitely we will be more motivated so it will lead to upward performance and okay <coughs> so now all the viewers if you are watching live then please subscribe our channel first of all <coughs> and type at the 24/7 that is right so Hi friends, welcome to Adda Twenty Four Seven. We are in the Scholar Series for APM. In this, we are covering the objective, important objective questions, important theory, as well as the important numericals. So follow the series completely. Okay, let's start. Event. Well, first definition. What is an event actually? Okay, when we have marriage at a home or some function at a home, what is that called as? That is called as event. Event means what? Something happening, something special happening, or you can call it something happening. Similarly, over here, banking event means what? A declaration of a banking moratorium, or any suspension, waiver, deferral, or repudiation of payments by banks with respect to indebtedness or deposits in the relevant jurisdiction. Now look at this event. What did I tell you about the marriage? It can be any event, right? Means some people are gathering, something is happening, so that you get an event over here, right? Similarly, over here, what is happening? Declaration of bank moratorium. What do you mean by moratorium? Okay, moratorium means everyone understands. Here we'll explain each and every term over here. Moratorium. Moratorium means what? We have. where do we have moratorium? We have moratoriums in home loans, right? Generally, we have them in home loans. What is a moratorium? It is a period where I don't have to pay the EMIs. Now, there can be various things, various points to this. For example, if I consider home loan, what do I do? I don't pay the interest. I'll write it over here. See this. In home loan, what is the moratorium? I don't pay the interest. Don't pay EMI, right? I don't pay EMI. I pay only interest. Pay only interest, right? That is home loan moratorium. Is there any other moratorium? Yes, there is. Which one? Everyone, type in the comment section. Which one is the other moratorium? Yes, yes, yes. It is. Other one is example education loan, right? In education loan also we have the moratorium. What is educational loan moratorium? Here, how does the education loan work actually? Education loan work loan works like this. Suppose if I am having let's say how many years? Four years of engineering generally. So if I am having four years of engineering or medical, medical is the five years generally. So if I am having four years of engineering. So these four years plus one year for job searching, one year. So total five years. The bank doesn't ask from me. Here the bank has given me the loan. So up to five years, bank doesn't ask from me any principal or interest. If I want to pay, I can pay. Suppose if uh, my father, mother, or my parents are rich enough, they'll pay the this uh, interest within this. Okay, so. 
EMI is not paid over here. Interest can be paid or else bank even says that you don't pay, any, pay anything up till the time of fifth year. Once you start the job, then you pay this interest, remaining interest also for this period. This So year from year what happens? Your principal amount, loan amount increases along with that interest. So th that interest will also be calculated over here. From here the person will have to pay EMIs, regular EMIs. So this is known as what moratorium. Moratorium means here I don't have to pay anything. Okay, that is moratorium. Where else do you find moratorium? Moratorium we found out where? We found out in in a, in during COVID COVID time. COVID time what happened? Government deferred the interest payment of many of the clients. Deferred. So don't pay for the for those two years. Pay it later. So that is all, again a moratorium. Okay. Or any suspension. Suspension means what? Directly suspended. Not to pay right now. It can be called as similarly to moratorium also. Waiver. Waiver is something different. Waiver and moratorium, they are different. What is waiver? In waiver, remember what happens. In moratorium, I'll have to pay later. But in waiver, I don't have to pay anything. Waiver, waiver, right? So equals to no payment. No payment, that is known as waiver. We have many farm uh, farm loans which are waived, right? We have many times farm loans are waived. Then what, what happens? Next is farm loans and certain uh, business loans. Business loans are never waived as such. Only farm loans are waived in India mainly, right? So that is waiver. Waiver means that person doesn't have to pay anything. Deferral, repudiation of payments by banks with respect to indebtedness or deposits in the relevant jurisdiction. So with respect to indebtedness means somebody is having the loan but that person is not able to pay the loan. So that is known as either waiver or this uh, suspension, right? So next, event means that imposition by any governmental authority of any moratorium on or any suspension, waiver, deferral, repudiation. So imposition by governmental authorities, generally the waiver comes from the government only during the election time mainly. Look at the state elections many a times. You get all these waivers during that time. Government authority of any moratorium or any suspension or any waiver, right? So this is known as an event, okay? Event means something happening, okay? Mutually exclusive. Exclusive means what? Things that are mutually exclusive are not able to occur simultaneously. What do you mean by this? Not able to occur simultaneously means at one time they will never occur. Which are the two exam Which are the examples? Give me one example from your side. Which will not occur simultaneously. Give me one example. It is number one. Suppose I toss a coin. Toss the coin. What does that? Uh, what does it do? While coin, I'll get either head or I'll get either tail. I won't get both, isn't it? Is it possible to get both in uh, this uh, while tossing the coin? Can you get both over here? Never, right? We never get both over here. So that's why the coins, coin tossing means it will give you either head or it will give you either tail. Never it, never it will it give you both, right? So, so that is one. What is the other one? Other one can be, anyone can give me other one? Other one can be? What is the other one? Right? It can be, suppose dice, which we throw during our school, uh, school days, we played the dice, right? Dice, die, throwing a die. Right? So that one to six. So that is again a die, isn't it? So that is mutually exclusive events. Means what? Coin, head or tail can never occur at, a, at one time. So that is exclusive. So in business also. In business, it I can either fail or I can succeed. It can't happen at once. Sure. Somebody can say, I can fail in the business earlier and then I can uh, this uh, lead in the business at some time also. That can happen. But can it happen right now I am failing also and I have succeeded also? Never. It's, it's called as binary. It's either this or that. Okay. In business, this is typically concerning the undertaking of projects, allocating a budget or allocating a budget. Means what? Undertaking a project. Means what? Undertaking the project. Project means 
suppose if I undertake a project, either it will succeed or it will fail. It will be never in between. Suppose if it gets delayed, then also it's a sort of failure only. I'm not able to do it on time. Okay. So undertaking a project is the type of will give you mutually exclusive events. Either it will succeed or it will fail. Okay. If two things are mutually exclusive, it means the existence and occurrence of one does not necessarily mean the other cannot coexist. Cannot. What does it mean? It means that suppose if I fail in fail in uh, any business, it doesn't mean I can't succeed. It can coexist. It can exist, but not at the same time. It can come at some other time. That is known as exclusive. Okay. See here. Always remember, exclusive events are shown like this. This is one. And the second part is over either it can be over here or this is also an exclusive event okay these are not attached but inclusive means they are common they can coexist at one time so this is not the case in exclusive events okay everyone subscribe to officers that 24 7 youtube channel in this channel you will be getting the latest updates on jib and cib number two you will be getting the free youtube series on all the subjects of jib and cib Okay, so subscribe to it, click on the bell icon, click on the like button. Okay, random experiment or trial. What do you mean by random experiment? Okay, what is the word random called as? Random means what? Random is anything. Suppose if I go to any place which I don't know, then what am I, where am I going? I am going to a random place. Isn't it? Suppose if I uh, just, um, how does the mosquito move? In a in a air, it moves in the random direction. Okay, it doesn't have any specific direction, so that is known as random. So, what is random experiment? An operation or experiment conducted under the identical conditions and which has number of possible outcomes is called as a random experiment or trial. So, an operation or experiment conducted under the identical conditions. Look at this identical. This is important. Identical conditions means those conditions which are similar. Similar. Okay. These are called as identical. Two boys are identical. Two girls are identical. It means what? They are similar looking. Okay. So two countries are identical. It means what? Their culture is similar. Okay. That is known as identical. So similarly, when I say conducted under identical conditions, what does it mean? Under similar conditions. And which has number of possible outcomes. Now it can be various outcomes which can come out. Okay. So that is known as random experiment or trial. Got it everyone? Important part. Remember identical conditions and number of possible outcomes. That is known as this random experiment or trial. So example, tossing a coin. Now you will say how can this be related to identical conditions? It can be. I toss a coin once. So I can get either head or tail. Now second time when I toss, I am again doing it under the identical conditions only. Just now I tossed once. Again I am tossing that coin. So now again I can have not only head, I can have tail also. So uh, it is given which has number of possible outcomes. So under the same conditions I have tossed the coin once. Again I have tossed the coin same in the same condition twice. But here I am getting a different outcome. I am not getting the head. So that is known as a random trial or experiment. I have done it in the identical conditions. Same, I have tossed the coin once. Similarly, I have tossed the coin in the same condition, but I am getting different result. Similarly, throwing a dice. Suppose if I throw a dice, what can happen? What can be the outcomes in, in the dice? I can either, what is the dice basically? This is a dice, right? Which we played Ludo in our childhood. Right, Ludo. We had all those six faces. Then one over here, then two over here, like this, right? Three over here. And then all these six outcomes were there. So that is throwing a dice. So when I throw a die over here, I can either have one at the top or two at the top or three at the top. So how many outcomes are possible? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Six outcomes are possible because there are six faces. Right? 
selecting a card from the pack of cards means what again look at this from a pack of cards how many cards are there there are 52 cards okay we don't consider the joker in considerations right so selecting a card selecting a card means i can select any card if i select any card so it can be any one of those 52 so what am i doing under this look at this identical conditions again identical conditions so the same pack of cards is there i am selecting once so again i am selecting the second card so doing the same experiment again with the similar conditions but outcomes may be different at that time i had got it some let's say ace of uh, this heart i might get a uh, get a ace of queen uh, this uh, spade then right in the second time anything is possible so that's why under the same conditions if i do something and the outcomes are different that is known as random experiment now let's solve some numericals the percentage of marks obtained by a student on a monthly test are given below so these are this is a, these are the five tests now by a student they are obtained by one student only so this is one student who is giving these marks okay so what are the tests five tests are there now percentage of marks are given over here 69 71 73 68 and 74 based on the above table find the probability of the student getting more than 70 percent of the marks in the test so more than 70 percent where it can that student get Mm, now this is something different, isn't it? What is the answer? Answer it everyone. How many of you can answer this? Let me see. Very simple. See here, the probability formula is always, what is the formula for probability? Let me draw a line over here. Otherwise it will hide behind my video, right? Probability formula is what? Probability equals to what? Success, whatever is the success criteria, right? Success upon sample space right total sample space or you can call it simple required upon total it's that simple here we should always keep the formula in simple language okay so now coming back what is this how many tests are there one two three four five and what do i want so total number of tests is what five so i've got it over here i'll make mark this total i'll write it total equals to 5 right this is 5 now what is required or success required is what is what is my requirement required is i want more than than 70 percent of marks right i want more than 70 percent of marks right so in that case what happens more than 70 percent of marks in how many tests am i getting it in first test what is what am i getting it 69 so this is less than 70 this is greater than 70 greater than 70 right less than 70 then greater than 70 right so in how many am i getting greater than 73 one two and three right and these two i'm not getting right so now what is my required required is more than 70 so in three tests i am getting more than 70 so what is my probability probability equals to equals to required upon total what is required three upon five okay or success upon sample space sample space means what i have covered it in my earlier lecture in sample space what happens i cover i take entire whatever is the gamut whatever is the total outcomes i take that so 3 upon 5 is what 0 0.6 okay so this is my probability isn't it always remember your probability can never be less than 0 and your probability can never be greater than 1 it will be between this only 0 and 1 it can be 0 also it can be 1 also but it can't be greater than 1 it can't be less than 0 okay in how many ways one king can be selected from a 52 cards Oh, one king can be selected from 52 cards. Again, let's solve it. Probability means what? Probability. Give me the formula now. Everyone type fast. Is let me keep it very simple. Required upon total, right? Okay. Now let let's get it. What is the total? Total is what over here? Total. 
How many cards are there? 52. What is required? Required equals to one king. Right? One king. But one king can be selected from how many kings? How many kings are there? Total. Total number of kings. Total number of kings are four. So I can select any one of these four. Is it given one king of this, one king of that, something, nothing. So required equals to four over here. Right? So when the required number is four, so my probability will be what? Probability equals to required is four upon 52. Now give me the answer. That becomes 1 upon 13. Now solve this everyone. Everyone solve this. Let me see who all can solve right now immediately. See here, your exams are near. Okay. You can't take the things lightly. Okay. Yeah. What is the answer? 1 upon 13, right? So it is <coughs> 1 upon 13, 0 0.07, right? So it is 0 0.07, 0 0.07 and 2 something, okay? 0 0.07, that much is enough. So the probability of getting one king from a pack of 52 cards is 0 0.07, okay? Next one. In how many ways I will get one ace king can be selected from 52 cards. Means one ace king to be selected from 52 cards. So again probability equals to required upon total. Right? Upon total. So what is required now? One ace king. And what is total? Total is 52 cards. So total is 52 over here. What is required now? One ace king. How many ace kings are there in the pack of 52? How many ace kings are there? Yeah. This, it's only one, right? How many types of cards are there? We know all these in our Hindi language or our Marathi language or our local language. But in English, how many types of cards are there? Spade. Spade. Then what? Heart. Right? Heart. Then what? Type first. Spade. Heart. Then other one? Diamond. Correct. Diamond. 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 Spade. Heart. Diamond. Next one. Which is the other one? Fast, fast, fast. Yeah? Which is the other one? Yeah? Which are the types? So spade, this, everyone. Fast, fast, fast. One more is club, right? Love. Everyone has got it. See here, what happens if we speak about these in our local language, but we don't know about these English words. And these are asked in the exam many times. Okay. So Let's come back to our problem. It is required upon total. So 1 upon 52. So that is the answer. That's it. 1 upon 52. What is the answer for 1 upon 52? 0 0.019. Okay. So 0 0.019. This is my required probability. One ace king can be selected from 52 cards. In how many ways can I select one joker card from a pack of 52 cards? Again. Simple one. So probability equals to required upon total, right? How many cards are there? Total. How many cards are there? 52. So 52. Okay. How many jokers are there in that 52 cards? How many jokers are there? There are zero jokers. Joker is outside this, this pack of 52.
already in the third batch we are doing the module right so here also i am having some question from module b itself so in third batch we are doing the chapter of that is performance management but today i have taken some 10 to 15 question from the module b that is from the chapter of development of hr and human implication of the organization right see uh, this is your first question from the zohari window if when we are talking about the exam point of view then definitely zohari window is a very very important topic right see this is the zohari window and it is given by the joseph lumchum okay joseph sorry right so zohari window right is a very very important topic when we are talking about the exam point of view okay and zohari window <coughs> that is given <coughs> sorry that is given given by the joseph looked and harrington Peacock. so in our uh, december exam there was a question from me that who has given the zohari window model the name is famous two psychologists they have given the zohari window that is joseph luft and harrington Peacock. and when we have shorted their name the zohari is named from their uh, name only you can lift and income name their model that is one given the combination of their first names okay so that is joseph look and harrington ingham okay joseph look and harrington ingham right so taken there by taken their first name that is zo ha rish <coughs> right so that is a zuhari video in this zuhari video See, basically, Zohari Vito, right, that is a technique designed to help people better understand their relationship with themselves and others. That means, how much, I mean, how much open they are with uh, with themselves and even with the other person. So, Zohari Vito is actually the method where we help people to better understand their relationship with themselves and others, right. So, in Suhari window, we have the four quadrant. Total four quadrant we have. That is, number one is arena. That means, that is a open quadrant. Open, right? This one is the blind, right? This one is the hidden, closed, that is. But this one is the dark. So, this is A, B, C and D. So, when we are talking about the arena, this is actually the open quadrant. That means in this quadrant, that is open quadrant, right, uh, the information which is lying under the arena, that means <coughs> that information is known to self and known to other. Okay. Then we have the blind spot. Blind spot, in this spot the information lying is which is known to other but not known to you, yourself, right. So that is a blind. That means we don't know about ourselves, but others know about us, right? Then the third is not known to other. That is basically the mask type of situation. Mask means you are hiding everything from the other person. So you know everything about yourself, but you are hiding. Okay? You are uh, wearing the mask actually. So the information which you are hiding from the other person. So not known to other. Okay? This is the area of not known to other. Okay. And this is the area is which is known to other. Okay. And the number one is the area here is that is known to self. Okay. And the second area is that is not known to self. Not known. Okay. So that is not known to so we have the four quadrant here that is arena, blind, hidden and dark. So that is third area that is hidden area, closed area where the information is not known to other right and known to self. Then the last area is that is the dark area. Here actually the information which is not known to self right and not known to other. That means it is the information which even other don't know about yourself. Right? And even you don't know about yourself. So that is a dark area. Completely unknown area. Dark area. We called it as a even unknown area also. Okay. This is an unknown area. 
so the question here is in the zohari window model the information about yourself that other know in a group but you will unaware about it okay that means other know <coughs> other know but you are not okay <coughs> you will be unaware about it so that means that is the area of light okay that means other know about yourself but you yourself don't know about that so that is a blind area now the second question here is red so in the last year in june exam there was a question from the red right that is role analysis technique now what is this analysis technique is all about see <coughs> the role analysis technique right this is actually the intervention normally to design <coughs> to clarify the role expectation and obligation to the team member to improve the team effectiveness right <coughs> so that is basically the structured exercise to provide an overall picture of what role is supposed to achieve the rationale for its existence in the organization right so normally this technique that is right role analysis technique that is actually the intervention which is designed to clarify role expectation and obligation to the team member to improve the team effectiveness <coughs> so this will be work where actually all the team member they know what is their role is so definitely the role ambiguity the confusion will be and it because of this technique so role analysis is the structured exercise to provide an overall picture of what role is supposed to achieve the rationale for its <coughs> existence in the organization so that is actually the role is basically the technique <coughs> right it is an intervention to clarify about the role expectation and obligation Okay, so it clarify about the role expectation <coughs> and role clarification. That is so role analysis technique actually give you the idea about the role expectation and role clarification so the answer there is that is role analysis technique now third question is identify the true statement from the following right you have to identify which one is the true statement number one is the child ego state mainly collect information and process okay this is your first goal, first option the second is the adult ego stage is mainly responsible for creativity curiosity and reaction to other the third is parent ego state mainly regulate the behavior and nurture it okay so which one is the correct statement see child ego state mainly collect the information and process it which is completely wrong okay third is the parent ego state mainly regulate behavior and nurture it <coughs> B is adult ego state mainly responsible for creativity and reaction to other. That is completely wrong. We are talking about child ego state here. Okay, and here we are talking about the adult. But the third one, see in the transactional analysis, which is given by the Eric Burn. Okay, we have done in the paid class also. He has given the three state. That is child. <coughs> <coughs> adult and parent right so child ego state mainly tells you about your right creativity curiosity and immediate reaction to the other adult ego state is mainly tells you about right to behave reasonable right but parent ego state that regulate your behavior and nurture it so here the right answer is see that one of 
the following is not a component of EI. See, EI is having the five components. Now, what is that EI is? EI is basically to understand your emotion and to understand other person's emotion as well. Okay, so that is your capability, that is your ability to understand your emotion and to understand other person's emotion as well. So, we have the five components here. The number one is self-awareness. Number two is self-regulation. Number three is empathy. Number four is self-motivation. Number five is social skills. Right? So, we have total five components here. Self-awareness, self-regulation, empathy, self-motivation and social skills. So basically when we are talking about these five components, right, that means here actually which one of the following is not a component of EI that is, okay. So when we are talking about EI, that is actually, to, uh, that is the ability to regulate your behavior and to regulate other person's emotion as well, okay. So we have the five component here, number one is self-awareness, that is, to know, uh, uh, to have the awareness about your emotion. Then we have the self-motivation. <coughs> that is all about to motivate yourself. Then we have the empathy. Empathy means to have the, <coughs> make up the mood of other, right? You have the capability to change the mood of other. Then we have the self-regulation. That means to regulate your own behavior, right? Then we have the, Social network that means you are having the capability to build rapport with others. Okay, so here actually technical skills is not the component of EI. So last year in December exam, there was a question of uh, that which one is a component or I think which one is not a component like that they have asked. So these five are the components self awareness, regulation, empathy, motivation, and social network. Next question is what is the head? See, in the personality theory, which is given by the, which is given by the, the motivation, sorry, in the personality theory, that is, three ego state is given, right? That is, id, ego, and super ego, right? Now, what is the meaning of id? See, id is your impulsive behavior, okay? Freud has suggests that Freud is very famous psychologist, <coughs> right? And he has suggests that in id ego state, right? Sorry, in id state, your impulsive be impulsive behavior work, right? That means you are thinking very impulsive, right? Like without even thinking of words. Ego is your reality. It is like your child behavior, basically. Okay? Then ego is your adult-like behavior. That means your Dealing with the reasonability, with the logic, with the according with the situation. Then we have the super ego. Now super ego is all about that is your super ego is moral, okay, right and wrong. So what is that in? That is a part of the psyche that control impulse. P is part of the psyche that reduce anxiety. C is a description of the innate institutional, right? Need. And G is a part of psyche that control our motives. So what is the meaning of it? That is actually control your, uh, sorry, that is actually reduce the anxiety, description of your innate, that part of that is actually the impulse. <coughs> right? We have the next question that is rebel hypothesis. See, rebel hypothesis is given by the F. W. Taylor. Okay? This is given by F. W. Taylor. Now, what was the opinion of R. W. Taylor? R. W. Taylor has thought that if any employee, right, if any employee who is working in the organization, they are completely working for the money, for the incentive, right? So, rational economic view or rebel hypothesis is given by the R. W. Taylor. Last year in the June exam, this question was asked, right? That what if uh, so? What was the opinion of R. W. Taylor? His opinion was if you are giving the money to the worker, if you are giving them the good salary to the worker, that means they will work for you. Okay, they will work for you. 
So the option is <coughs> that is workers are motivated more by the need for satisfaction. Workers are motivated more by the sense of security. Workers are motivated more by the need for money. Workers are motivated more by the working environment. So here actually the answer is C. That workers are motivated more by the need for money benefits. Which one of the following statement is correct about the self-awareness? Again this question is from the Zwari window. That is arena, blind, closed and dark. Okay. So we are talking about the self-awareness. Which one is the right? Arena and closed are known to self. Okay. See this area. This area is what? <coughs> we have already done this. This area is known to other and not known to other. Okay. Uh, that is known to other. Right. And not known to other that is. Okay. This area is <coughs> known to self and not known to self. Okay. So here we are talking about arena and clothes that are known to self. Arena and clothes. Yes, that are known to self. Arena and clothes that are known to other, which is wrong. Clothes and dark are known to other. Closed and dark. Known to other. That is also wrong. Arena and dark are known to self, which is also wrong. So number one is the right. See, if you want to remember this, normally last to last year in a year of 2022, there was a five marks question from only Zohari. So it is a very, very important topic, right? You can see here A, B, C, D, right? So this is a very, very important topic. And when we are talking about the Zohari window, right? Please remember this picture. Upper one is not, uh, that is known to other, not known to other, known to self and not known to self. A, B, C, D, simple. Okay? So just, right? Remember this picture. If you are remember this picture, then definitely it will be easier for you. <coughs> then we have question 9. This is from the reinforcement theory of motivation. Okay? See, this concept, that is operate conditioning, is given by the VF Skinner. Now, what was the opinion of VF Skinner? His opinion was, that is, okay, that is actually, if you are working something, Right? If you are doing a very good work, okay? that means if you are going to reward for that work, then of course you will repeat that behavior. That is we call it as a positive reinforcement. But for the behavior, you will be getting the punishment. Then definitely you won't be repeat so that kind of behavior. So it we call it as a negative behavior. Okay? Negative reinforcement. Right? So here the option is number one, a reservoir of feeling, thought, urges and memories that are outside of our conscious awareness. B is a behavior training technique in which reinforcement or punishment are used to influence behavior. Third is <coughs> the largely unconscious part of the personality okay, that mediate the demand of id ego, super ego and reality. So we are actually, we are talking about here, that is B. We are talking about the positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. So that is a behavior training technique in which reinforcement or punishment are used to influence B. Okay. Question number 10 is the motivation is determined by the nature of the reward people expect to get as a result of their job performance. Which of the following theory? postulates it. Okay? That, that is balance, instrumentality and expectancy model. Instrumentality theory, path goal theory or all of them. So of course the all of them is the right answer. All the three names are from the Broom theory. So when we are talking about the Broom theory, that means we are talking about if we know what type of reward that person is going to get. Okay? What kind of reward we are going to get. Then definitely we will be more motivated. So it will lead to upward performance and reward. Okay. <coughs> so now all the viewers, if you are watching live, then 
please subscribe our channel first of all <coughs> and type adda 247 that is right so this is the link of 